Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at work solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam that will be sat by students studying a BTEC Level 3 National in Engineering. Now the document that we're referring to in particular today are the sample assessment materials for the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam and this document is issue 2 that is or has previously been available on the Edexcel website. Question 5 states the diagram represents a joining plate and what we have is a non-right angle triangle. We're asked to calculate the size of angle A. Now if we look at the diagram there, what we can see is that we know the three lengths but we don't know any of the angles. Whenever we have a non-right angle triangle, what we're looking at using is either the sine rule or the cosine rule. But the sine rule relies on us knowing at least one angle. Before we go on to solve this question, it's again worth mentioning that this question, with slightly different wording, was also on issue 1 of the sample assessment materials. Here it is again on issue 2, so that would suggest that it's highly likely to appear on the exams again in the coming year. If not an identical question, then something very similar to this. So from what we know about the sine and cosine rule, we can only use the sine rule when we know at least one angle, and here we have a non-right angle triangle, but we don't know any of the angles. So instead we're going to use the cosine rule, which states that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Now that formula can be found at the start of this exam paper, so you would be given that in the exam. Now when we look at that formula there, we're first of all going to find or isolate cos a, and then we'll be able to find the value of the angle a. Now let's begin by inputting some values. A is 60 in millimetres, so we have 60 squared. We're going to work in millimetres on this question. B is 30, and C is 42. So we have 60 squared equals 30 squared plus 42 squared, minus 2 times BC, or B is 30, C is 42, cos of the thing we're trying to find, A. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 30 squared and 42 squared from each side. And the reason I'm doing that is because the thing I'm trying to find at this point, cos A, is tied up in this expression here. So I'm going to isolate the expression that contains the thing I'm trying to find. So rewriting this, I get 60 squared minus 30 squared minus 42 squared equals, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out my 2 times 30 times 42, so I get minus 2, 5, 2, 0, cos A. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to simplify this a little bit, and the way I'm going to simplify it is by multiplying out my left hand side. You see at the moment I have 60 squared minus 30 squared minus 42 squared. Well if I run that through my calculator, I'll just end up with a number. And that number is 936. Therefore, 936 equals minus 2520, make sure you don't lose that minus sign, cos A. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each side, and I'm going to divide each side by minus 2520. I could alternatively do this in two steps. I could change the sign of each side, and then divide by 2520, but that just introduces an extra step. So I'm dividing by minus 2520. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get cos A equals 936 over minus 2520, or cos A equals minus 0.3714, accurate to four decimal places. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take cos to the minus one of that answer, because cos to the minus 1 is the inverse of cos. That's how I get a on its own. Minus 0.3714. Now, although I have this answer here to four decimal places, 
what I'm actually going to do is cos to the minus 1 of the full calculator answer just to avoid any rounding errors. Therefore, a equals cos to the minus 1 of answer. And I get an answer of 111.8 degrees. It's probably worth also noting that in order to get an answer in degrees here, we need to make sure that our calculator is in degrees mode. So before you do that cos to the minus 1 calculation, just check that your calculator is in degrees mode as opposed to radians mode.